I have Kristen joining me on this episode to talk through Helios, an alternative smart contract language for developing dApps on Cardano. And I've had Christian on before to go through the platform, but it's been about a year now. So there's quite a few developments and I'm pretty excited to find out what's been going on around the Helios ecosystem. So Christian, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for having me, Pete. So what is Helios for those that don't know what it is and haven't been kept up to date in the Kadana ecosystem? It's a domain-specific language, a small little programming language for writing smart contracts or better said, smart validators for, for, for Cardano. <laughs> um, and um, it's, it's grown into more than that, actually. So initially, it was just a, just a language and a compiler, compiling it into Bluetooth core. Uh, and um, now it has become more of a framework. Um, so it also, the Helios library, so it's a compiler and a library. The library itself contains everything that you would need to build transaction and so forth. And um, I didn't know that there would be such a lot of synergy between having to, the both parts together, like like uh, most, I think, approaches on in Cardano, they are separate. But having it all together in a single library makes things, there's some interesting synergies there. Yeah, for sure. I could maybe say for people that haven't heard about it that it, it feels a bit like Golang, uh, syntax-wise at least. Uh, it has some object-oriented programming features, which is um, which is very nice if you have more complex dApps uh, to en encapsulate complexity. Um, you could try purely functional, but you will. I, I find this, in my experience, to be a little bit easier this approach. And that there have been quite a few uh, users and dApps using Helios over the last year. Uh, could you name a couple of projects uh, that are actually using Helios at the moment? Two most uh, popular ones are um, Dropspot and Ada Handle. Uh, they are both using Helios. I think they're big fans of the fact that um, it integrates so nicely into a JavaScript or TypeScript um, uh, backend um, because the library itself is is basically just JavaScript or, or TypeScript as a full type interface. Um, so so they are big fans of that. Uh, there's some other smaller projects. Um, the 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 main one I want to call out, which is hopefully becoming a bigger project, is the one that I'm working on right now. Um, so I'm working on a project called PBG Token, um, which is. Basically, um, I, I'm not supposed to uh, sell it like this, but it's basically a tokenized investment fund. Um, I think that's the simplest way to explain <laughs> it. It doesn't sound so sexy. So, so, yeah. um, so the, the, the people in the team have, have recommended me not to talk about it like that. But I think um, for, the, for the Cardano community, we can't we can, we can sell it um, because uh, it, it is a security. So we have to do a full KYC thing, um, legally speaking, before selling it. But because the Cardano community is kind of tight-knit and small, I, th I think I, I'm able to talk about it right now. So yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the main thing that I'm really excited about because there we are using quite a lot of um, smart validators uh, for the contract. We're using 18 of them. Um, 18. 18, wow. yeah. And um, I've, of course, I've tailored in Helios in the meantime to be able to manage that complexity. Um, I like I, I know that a lot of other dApps they're trying to do everything in a single validator, uh, which is actually possible. So um, you could um, you could use the same validator for minting and for 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 spending, and that way you could basically encapsulate all the complexity in a single validator. Um, but we figured that like if you have the right framework. <laughs> To, to, to manage that complexity, then you can do it in separate validators, which is a little bit cleaning, cleaner audit-wise, uh, development-wise. Um, the, the fastest thing or the easiest part of this project was definitely developing the, the, the contract. Uh, the more difficult part is all the, the back-end and front-end and, and all the, the more traditional Web2 stuff. Uh, that development is, is taking a lot more time. Like I would say, ninety percent or even ninety-five percent has been has been that. And <laughs> wow! Right, right now, a... whether you're using Helios or other frameworks, it's really, really easy now to do the 
to do the smart validator stuff. So that's that's really gotten a lot better over the last year, for sure. That is a massive difference. I remember developers complaining how long it took and mm. uh, even setting up environments was uh, quite painful sometimes, but this is all flipped on its head now. And uh, yep. it's good to know that uh, the regular Web2 front-end development and back-end development is just <laughs> just just the norm now. So that's really good to hear. Now, wh what about resources and demos? I did have a look at the Helios website before and I saw a couple of demos on there. Well, where can people get started? Uh, and uh, what type of resources are out there for people to get their hands on to start developing their own smart validators on Cardano? Um, yeah, sadly, I haven't had any time yet to, to create proper uh, demo videos. Um, I tried uh, right before the, the the voting started of the last Catalyst Fund, but again, then time constraints. Um, yeah, it was it, it's it's difficult. I would say right now the best resource is probably the Discord, the the Helios Discord. Uh, there, there are some some. Well, it's it's quite a small group of people that are active on it, but they they do tend to help quite well, um, giving uh, code samples and, and and helping people with. With, with well, with whatever development questions they have, whether it's kind of general smart contract stuff or it's specific Helios stuff. Um, also, if there's maybe a specific bug in Helios or something that looks like a bug because the because the error messages aren't yet awesome, um, the compiler error message can be a little <laughs> bit yeah. can be a little bit um, yeah, just bad. Um, like they they will they will help you uh, help you out there, and then I would say that. Uh, the Helios book or the Helios manual is, is is probably the best resource for just everything related to the library and to the language itself. It, I think it's quite well documented. Uh, I, I try to keep it. It's not like the, the, most of the documentation isn't auto-generated based on the Helios compiler itself. So I had to I had to do that all like manually, maintain it manually. Um, the API documentation is now finally generated automatically based on the, the library code, so that's that's good. That's all in sync, and uh, yeah. But the language again, the language is not something that that changes frequently, right? So I, I think that, that approach is okay for now. Um, it's just a lot of work goes into creating a language and then all the tooling, like auto generation of documentation, that kind of tooling. That's still. Maybe another Catalyst fund where I can propose that, <laughs> but right now that's not uh, yeah. that's not yet there. I, I know the feeling. I, I spend a lot of my time doing documentation. It's quite tedious as well, so uh, I do get over it sometimes. Um, but you did mention Catalyst proposals, and I would like to know the roadmap of where Helios is going next. So if people are picking up Helios as a smart validator language, running smart contracts on Cardano, uh, they'd like to see that this is future-proof and that you guys are continuously developing and taking it further. So what have you guys got in store for your Catalyst stuff, and what's the general roadmap for the project over the next year? Um well, there, that's kind of the difficult part there. So, so far, Helios hasn't been able to generate uh, much income. There have been some donations, uh, which, which I'm uh, very appreciative for, but um, nothing to, uh, to have me full time on Helios right now. So, I'm, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm spending most of my time on PBG token, and there, most of the work is not smart validators at all. So, it's, it's a bit of a difficult thing there. Um, I could ask for for you know VC funding or something for Helios, but that doesn't make that all that much sense. Like like, the most sensible thing is Catalyst funding for Helios. Uh, that would make make the most sense uh, as as the the benefits really come back to the Cardano community from that investment. So depending on the Catalyst funding, then we can kind of build out the it's a chicken or egg problem, right? So depending on Catalyst funding, yeah. we can build out a more serious roadmap. So right now. The roadmap is kind of, kind of careful, small steps, uh, and over the next year, if if these two proposals get funded, then that would be kind of the main thing. Um, and and there are two proposals for this catalyst round. One is a unit testing framework inside the Helios language itself, um, inspired by people might know this Mokito. Um, I think that's a Java uh, unit testing framework. Um, 
uh, basically you do unit testing. Uh, so this is quite distinct from, from how some other languages do it with special syntax. This doesn't have any special syntax for unit testing. It's just using, it, it uses objects, uses built-in functions and objects. So that would be the approach there. Uh, that's a that's the smaller uh, catalyst proposal for this round, and then the, the bigger catalyst proposal is. And this is something that I'm really hoping for that it gets funded because it would make our life so much easier at PBG Token. Um, it's the a Helios debugger in VS Code. Um, we chose VS Code for this proposal because it uh, that's that's the IDE that we are using, and that's that's basically the, <laughs> almost the standard IDE for JavaScript and TypeScript production or, or development. Uh, so the debugger would be in that in that IDE. And then uh, like, like what we really would like is to have some kind of cloud service thing running where, so you compile your, your contract, you compile your validators. It, it compiles into a bundle, into a JavaScript bundle, um, similar to, was it SIP, SIP 57, SIP 58? I'm not sure anymore. Anyway, it's a small little bundle. It contains all the logic of the validator, and it also contains a lot of helper functions to be able to build transactions. So this is all auto-generated based on based on the validators, based on what they look like, based on the types. So this is all auto-generated, this little bundle. And it also, it, of each validator, it contains two copies. It contains the, the small one, the minimized one, that actually runs on chain. Which, which we can minimize because the, the error messages are so bad anyway, it doesn't matter, uh, so it's just minimized. And then there's a big one, which contains code mapping and it contains all the error messages and it's the full thing. And functionally, they're the same thing. So in, in the Helios compiler, I've put a lot of effort in making sure that the minimization doesn't change the functionality at all. So whatever the input is, you will always get the same output for the minimized and the unminimized or Perhaps I should say optimized and unoptimized, but unoptimized, optimized version of the code. So that's kind of that's already there. So that's how the bundler currently works. That's already there. And then the the dream there would be that there is this cloud service to which it connects. Um, and then if if something fails, um, it basically sends a message to your IDE that says, Ah, this contract here at this line of code, and then uh, it failed. And then you can step. Ideally, you can step back from where the failure happened all the way to wherever to, to be able to debug it. That would be amazing because currently, like, well, in, a, in order to be able to do integration testing or assert certain exotic errors, is it's, it's difficult to catch and it's difficult to debug because they happen in production. Um, and we can't always, like, like it's, Cardano is, is nice, but it's still a complex environment and, and things can go wrong um, in production and then things we might not have caught before in, during testing. So there, if we could just catch it in production and, and you know, I, I get the little alarm on my AWS console app and then I can just go into my, uh, into my IDE and I can figure it out like super fast, that would be a dream. So that's the main catalyst proposal this round. Anybody watching this, um, even if you're not using Helios, like like like, please vote for this. Uh, this this will be so cool, and then people will gradually appreciate the, the hopefully <laughs> the ease with which um, smart contracts can be debugged, even in, even in production. So that's 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 uh, that would be the the cherry on the cake of Helios <laughs> for this year. <laughs> So it sounds like it will make developers' lives so much easier, and that's what it's all about. Uh, yep. We're at the point where we're trying to get all this tooling out there to make development that much easier mm -hmm. on Cardano. So yep. uh, I'll put all the links and everything down below for the resources that we talked about, uh, everything around Helios and those Catalyst proposals as well. So if anyone's watching this, please consider voting for this one as well. Put it to your shortlist. It could be a very good one for the the entire Cardano community to have this one to try and enable those smart contract developments uh, out there in the ecosystem. So Christian, good luck with this. Uh, fingers crossed for the, the votes and we'll talk again real soon to see where everything is going. And also I'll, p I'll pick your brain about that PGP token as well. So that sounds pretty interesting too. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll contact you about that, uh, see if we can. Yeah, that's an interesting one too. All right, thanks Christian. We'll speak again soon. Thanks, thanks, Pete.
Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.